All right, welcome to our latest virtual bourbon event. I've got Chris Fredrickson here from Traverse City Whiskey Company, and he's got something pretty cool today. He's going to be talking about the cherries that they sell. And I don't know, he, when I talked to him before, he claims that they're the best in the world, perfect for cocktails. So I wanted to find a little bit more about that. And of course, the cool thing is we'll talk about what goes into all these things. And then your guys, of course, are going to get to try them because they're going to be sent a jar. So Chris, how you doing, man? Yeah, very well. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. So we'll talk good. about the cherries in just a second. I want to kind of back up a little bit just to make sure everybody knows who you are and a little bit about you. So tell us about your distillery and how you got started with it. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're based up in northern Michigan in a small town called Traverse City, which is about uh, two hours north of Grand Rapids on the on Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, we are, Traverse City is actually known for uh, its cherries dating back 30, 40, 50 years. Um, but it, fast forward 30 years, um, the, a lot of wine growers realized that they could grow grapes in a, an easier way than cherries, a more consistent way. The winery scene went live, and then soon thereafter, we saw an opportunity to open a craft distillery. Um, so back in 2011, my father and I found a set of distilling patents from my great-grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, they were distilling patents that related directly to technique, uh, but this really was a, it was a springboard for the um, kind of the incubation of our company. And we started this small, we bootstrapped this small vision called Traverse City Whiskey. And uh, we opened a, a 2,500 square foot still house downtown Traverse City. And it was a humble start. Uh, I personally built uh, a lot of the interior of the building which was uh, originally a, a light and power substation built in 1929. So there's a lot of cool history that we started with. Uh, we bought a, we purchased a, a Vendo, or excuse me, Vendo, a, a, a Cote pot column still. Okay. And, and distilling in 2014. Uh, we've since upgraded to a Vendo still, but uh, we, had a, we had a very humble start. Um, we opened our cocktail bar. So we started distilling in 2014. We opened our cocktail bar in 2015. And we were, because we focus on classic cocktails, we were, we were sourcing an extreme amount of uh, garnishes for our mm -hmm. cocktails. And in our, our bar scene in Traverse City is, is very speakeasy style, but we, we realized almost immediately that, you know, I'm, I'm a, I guess, fourth generation farmer. I don't, I don't farm with my father anymore, but um, him being third generation, we, we've been growing cherries for 50 years. And um, the cocktail scene is what really inspired the, um, the cherries. So we've been distilling now for five years. We make a, um, we can't see all of them right now because it's a little out of the, the picture, but we make uh, nine different expressions of whiskey. Okay. Most are bourbon based, some are rye based. And yeah, these are the base of what will go into the, uh, the cocktail this evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about uh, cherries. I've got, I've got at least a couple questions here. So the first one yeah. is, you grew up a uh, cherry farmer. What, did, you, did you work on the farm yourself personally uh, growing up and, and those type of things? And if so, what, what were some of the things that you had to do? I did. I started at age 11 driving uh, high-low or forklift throughout the orchard. And that was just transporting cherry tanks. Uh, from the from the harvesting operation back to the the cherry pits where the cherries are stored, um, I I've done everything in the orchard um, from start to finish. Whether that's driving driving any tractor, uh, it's called it's called pulling tarps, where you you actually pull you physically pull a fifty pound uh, synthetic like plastic tarp under the tree. The tree gets harvested, and then you roll it back in. Rinse and repeat 10,000 times. It's an ugly summer for a high school kid. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so at that, yeah, after that experience, it's not like working at McDonald's where then you love McDonald's going in. That's why you want to work there as a teenager. And then, uh, you know, two months in, you hate it. Did, cherries, did you, did you get to that point with those? Or, or did it not, that not uh, affect you in that way? Uh, never never uh, grew into the more mundane um, 
cycle, I guess. I, I was always um, blessed because my father was the, you know, the cherry, he was the, the lead farmer, the owner of the orchard. So I, I had versatility in my day. So I went, I got as far as managing part of the receiving operation for the fruit, which processed several hundred thousand pounds of fruit a year. And, and it was great, but I, I knew I needed more. So that's when I, I jetted off to, to undergrad, which is where I met my current business partners at, at Michigan State. Mm-hmm. And, and grew, uh, I, I pursued a degree in business because I knew I enjoyed management, but all, of course, all that started um, at the orchard. Mm-hmm. Is the uh, orchard still in the family? It is, yeah. Yeah, oh. my, my father's still farming. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be uh, an unfortunately light year this year. Um, Traverse, one of Traverse City's chief exports has always been cherries. However, um, a lot of, the reason that our winery scene is growing is because the cherry itself is a, a very delicate fruit. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have perfect or consistent uh, weather conditions, it leads to a very frustrating summer or a very frustrating harvest because your, your yield can be anywhere between 10% and 90%. It's a pretty big swing. Pretty big swing, yeah. 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 Sure. Yep. Do you, so, do you have a good feel for that uh, as the the years going on? Like, what percent you're going to be at, or is it? Just... Yeah, it's. I mean, the cycle's pretty constant. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this year we had we had two pretty unfortunate things happen. Well, three as it relates to farming um, or Traverse City. Uh, we had a we had an early spring. So it got warm early yeah. on, and that mm-hmm. that told the cherry trees that it's time to to bloom. Yeah. And so the, they started to, to blossom and then we had a flash freeze and it, it killed about 90% of the harvest. Um, which that happens um, mm-hmm. every few years. Um, but then we had the cancellation of our national cherry festival. So every year, about a half million people flock to Northern Michigan up to Traverse City for the national cherry festival. Yeah. Cherry capital of the world. Uh, that got canceled, of course, and um, and then you just, you just weave COVID in there, and it's just a freaking headache. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we have some Michiganders on here. So there's uh, half the people here are from Michigan by chance, and uh, so you need to tell me. I'm not from Michigan, I, I I'm, so I I don't know. But you mentioned yep. Traverse City as being the hot spot for cherries. I, I never knew that to be honest. I've never heard that. I just always hear Michigan cherries are the best. So so, but you're telling me within Michigan, the place to get them from is Traverse City. Absolutely, yeah. There's a, there's a certain weather pattern that flocks uh, all the way from Washington, Oregon. Uh, through Wisconsin, through Michigan, all the way to France. And on that latitude, um, it's an incredible uh, atmosphere for growing fruit and specifically cherries. They, uh, they, they bode well um, on the good seasons and it's, it's being, become something that we're, we're known for, not just on a, a local or state or regional level, but across the world. Mm-hmm. Well, it's compelling because when, because I do continually hear Michigan has the best cherries. So when you're talking about the best, then within that f- frame, that's that's setting up some pretty high standards and high hopes for what you've got today. So when yeah. you open up your distillery, you're focusing on cocktails. Tell us what you were looking for with a cocktail cherry. Uh, I know there has to be some subset within the cherries. What what what, what specifically you think makes a good cocktail cherry? Well. One thing that makes a a great cocktail cherry, and this is the this is one thing that I personally have been aggressive about um, learning more about, and then and then finding the the perfect fit, which happened to be from here in Northern Michigan. But that is the body of the cherry. Um, so many, I mean, most of the world is conditioned to look at a cocktail cherry and look at like the the maraschino style dyed red. Two ninety nine a jar mm-hmm. at most grocery stores across the world. Um, those cherries, it's it's. We always joke and say it's kind of like those are kind of like a soulless cherry. Yeah. And <laughs> um, one thing that we've we've really um, searched hard to find across probably ten different varieties is is the what I like to call an elegant bite. So when you put the cocktail cherry in your cocktail and let it rest in the the cold, the cold cocktail. Um, 
when you take a bite out of it, you want a, you want a very a pleasant experience as it relates to the crunch or the bite, mm -hmm. the flavor, the, the color, just the, it's the overall experience. And so many varieties of cherries are either too hard, they're too firm, uh, they're too soft and they're mushy. Um, we wanted to find something that was just, just very well suited in between all of it, uh, but also had a very approachable, um, authentic flavor. Mm -hmm. So kind of compare and contrast a little bit to me for the Luxardo, because when I think of premium yeah. cherries, a lot of my bartender friends, and we have a lot of bartenders on the shows and things like that. And they'll talk about the Luxardo cherry as, as yep. you know, and many times their drinks will say garnish with Luxardo. It doesn't say cherry or maraschino cherry. It says uh, Luxardo. So tell me uh, what yours, how they compare to that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, we, we actually, um, we developed our, our, our entire basis for our premium cocktail cherry was based on a Luxardo standard. And one of our aha moments as a company was we were buying hundreds and hundreds of dollars of the Luxardo cocktail cherries a month until all of a sudden one day we just kind of had that aha moment and we're like, what are we doing? <laughs> Why are we buying Italian cherries? That's crazy. Right, right. We produce something equally as good in Northern Michigan and we, we can do better. Um, so the way that I like to share it, especially when I'm going to account to account uh, with, with whether it's, you know, at a bar a restaurant or a, a, um, a retail store is, you know, that our value proposition of the fruit is one, it's made right here in Michigan. It's made at a farm five miles from our front door, which also implies that it's made in the U S so you're not importing a good. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, we found some areas of the, the flavor profile that, were kind of unique to this varietal of cherry, which is a, a Balaton sour cherry. Um, it's only grown here in the Traverse City area or the up north region. Um, here in Hungary, uh, we, we brought it here from Hungary and we're, we're one of the only spots in the United States that grow it. Um, but that's where you're gonna get this, this really nice balance of sweet and sour in the flavor and then also that crunch. This is the only cherry that we found that has that, that bite, that that makes it so special. No, yeah, you're, you're, you're convincing me here for, yeah. for sure. You're, you're getting me interested. So what do people come in and say about this? Because you have to be exposing people to these all the time. And, and I would say, like I said, the, 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 somebody who might be a cocktail snob, Luxardo would be the one that they would throw out. So when you, when you give them your cherries, what, what do they think about those? What's the reaction? You know, so first the, um, <laughs> we've jokingly developed standards for, cocktails in house and um, how many cherries a customer is allowed to get per cocktail because we've had so many so many so many guests that have come in and have tried one and they're like well that's 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 pretty darn good Could, may, may i have another <laughs> and it's may i have another and, may, and we're like listen order another cocktail and we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about it but it's uh <laughs> there's a lot of um there's a lot of eagerness to just enjoy the cocktails you know dipping it into the dipping dipping the cherry into the cocktail and then just in, enjoying it on the fly. It's a very, like I said, it's, it's a well-balanced, um, a well-balanced uh, garnish between the sweet and the sour. Um, the bite is great. And the size is, the size is exceptional. When, when you're grading cherries, there are, there's typically about three different size factors. And, and most of the, most of the cherries on the market are what are called the 16 to 18. They're 16, 18, 18, 20, and, and 20, 22. And ours are the largest of that group. Yeah, and I, I like what you said, like a, kind of a snap to it when you bite into it, because it, going back to the maraschino cherry, those are, I, I would define those as ragged when you pull them out of the thing. They're, they're, they're soft and, and kind of mushy and, and not even shaped like a cherry. Many times they're yep. flattened out, so. So, you know, just, one thing that we also like to share about what makes this uh, a more approachable product for your, for your bar or for your home bar is just the, the cost per cherry. I mean, you know, most bartenders speak in cost per ounce and when you're, when you're talking about costing cocktails and the cost per cherry is about 25% less than uh, the leading import cherry brand. And that's, um, you know, it's certainly from a costing standpoint, uh, we just say, you know, would you, would you like more for less that's higher quality and American made? 
and that's that's what we lead with. And if you don't like it, fine. You know, no harm, no harm, no foul. But um, we believe that these are are some of the best in the world, and at a very at a very fair price point. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think it's obviously safe to say, I would never say that uh, you're a better expert at cherries than your whiskey, but it sounds like you're pretty on par with your knowledge of both your products, you know, making whiskey and your, your knowledge of the cherries. Growing up around it is, just makes it such a, a special and unique thing you got going on here. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So, you, yeah, I guess you've got some cocktails or things like that that you can share with us that'll showcase exactly uh, how, how best to utilize the cherries when, when our folks get them? Yes. Absolutely. Um, so like I said, we've always prided ourselves on the classics. And when I first, so when we opened our, the way that we opened our still house downtown, we were closed for an extra six months, duking it out with the city on our permitting. And one day the, the lovely lady from the city of Traverse City walked in the door with our certificate of occupancy and we'd already been distilling, but she walked in with the C of A and said, you guys, are, you guys are allowed to bring people in the doors now. You can start as a real business. And I gave her a big hug and I jumped on YouTube and in about three or four hours, I learned how to bartend. Um, <laughs> we, were, we were pouring drinks that were neat on the rocks. Um, but my, go, my first go-to that I learned was the, the classic 212 recipe. So the, the Manhattan. Um, so that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna piece together for you guys today. Okay, yeah. Let's see what you got. All right. So the, the Manhattan is one of the most classic, uh, I guess, American cocktails, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the recipe calls for uh, two on two. So uh, two ounces of a whiskey. It could be a rye whiskey or bourbon. Uh, one ounce of sweet vermouth. And then two dashes of bitters. Um, we typically gravitate toward Angostura bitters, although we are working on some in-house. Okay. Um, but so this is a fairly simple recipe. Um, most of you may, may know it. So I always start with uh, a good amount of ice. It is about, oh, probably 103 or four degrees where I'm at right now, which is the, uh, our satellite tasting room at our production facility. So, that like I said, bad. you can use it, you, you can use a variety of whiskeys. Um, in-house, we use our, our straight bourbon or our cherry whiskey, which these two whiskeys are, are really what we're known for across the country. They sit next to each other on the shelf at a lot of retailers. Uh, or you can make a rye Manhattan, which okay. is also a common, a common uh, substitute. Steve, any recommendations on which of the three I should use right now? I mean, we're we're completely bourbon focused, so let's let's go All with right. the bourbon. Cool. Good cork pop, solid. You you heard that, didn't you? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're into that. All right. Two inches of bourbon. And then. Another nice cork pop. Yep. This is a bourbon. Okay. One ounce of sweet vermouth. Okay. Angostura bitters, which is the most, arguably the most common uh, brand of bitters in the world. Oh, nice (laughs) doll. Two firm ounces, two firm dashes is all you need. <laughs> I will not be enjoying this cocktail this evening. <laughs> it's like the fun governor was taken off. However, finishing, and this is the most important part. When you add this cherry, yes, always grab a little uh, dribble of syrup. Okay. And bring that down into the cocktail with the cherry. Gotcha. And the trick to enjoy it the most is to let it sit, soak up some of the booze. Okay. Let it get nice and cold and firm and make sure that drizzle comes off your cocktail spoon. Gotcha. And uh, a Manhattan is typically 
Um, always complete with a good, uh, essentially spin it until it's uncomfortable in your hand. Okay. Cold, colder is better. Colder is better. All right. Yep. Yeah, well, that sounds pretty delicious for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, easy to make too. I like easy. Easy is always good. Uh, and uh, on over ice, you know, a lot of times I'll get to Manhattan. It's not over ice, but this is more appropriate for summertime. So I like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Now, tell me, tell me a little bit about that cherry whiskey. So, uh, you know, it's not something I'm normally interested in, but all this talk about cherries today and you have such a unique uh, relationship with cherries and, and definitely your expertise. I want to hear about a whiskey flavored with cherries. Yes. In fact, on that note, I'm going to pour a sample. Okay. So we released the cherry whiskey at the tail end of the flavored vodka craze. Okay. So, of course, the world said, we don't need another flavored anything. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, this product was birthed, of course, out of the, out of the roots of Northern Michigan. Um, the family history, and then uh, back in the day, the bourbon itself was our, our only product. So our second to shelf was the cherry whiskey. Okay. And um, the cherry whiskey, and we're actually building a, a small docu-series on how it's made right now because it's quite a romantic process, but it's the same exact uh, approach to making the bourbon, which is simply dumping the same recipe of bourbon. We usually build six barrels into a tank. Okay. We did the exact same thing with the cherry whiskey, except we add a little bit more water where our straight bourbon is 86 proof. The yeah. cherry is 70 proof. Okay. And, and then we, um, we macerate or we, we steep like a kind of, we build like a tea bag of um, 10 pounds of uh, Mount Morency sour cherries okay. that are frozen. And we steep them into the, the tank of bourbon for between, it's usually between five and 10 days. And it just depends on the batch of whiskey and the batch of fruit. Um, so the, the cherries will macerate into the, into the whiskey. Um, and as soon as our, our, one of my fellow distillers, um, believes that the batch is ready, we, we pull them out and bottle the, bottle the whiskey. So right. yeah, it's, it's a very authentic process, but you know, the one thing we were, we were really targeting early on was we wanted to grab either new whiskey drinkers or even enthusiasts. So Steve, when you say it's not my thing, right? that's my favorite thing to hear. <laughs> it, it, I don't, I mean, I don't have a dog in the fight. I mean, of mm -hmm. course I want you to love it, but at the same time, your palate is your palate. So you're going to enjoy it or not. But yeah, I, you know, I'm very curious in this because you've, you've done it the right way. What I don't like is I don't like flavorings added. Mm -hmm. uh, I found, you know, a whiskey made like that where you've got infused with macerated cherries, I, I'm interested in that. I would try that. There's some cherry whiskeys out there that are flavored with, and it, it always tastes off to me. They're either it just tastes off like, like fake or it tastes too overly sweet like uh, syrupy. And I don't like that either. So I, I, I'm yep. very curious about what you got going on there with that. So that, that is kind of our, our verbal tagline with the cherry whiskey and that it's whiskey with a hint of cherry, not cherry with a hint of whiskey. Mm -hmm. Because it's, at the end of the day, if you know, with any pronounced flavor, we then we're just isolating ourselves from, I think, so much of the market. But the fact of the matter is, when you pour a glass of the cherry whiskey, you are still drinking whiskey with just right. that subtle essence of the cherry. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, you know, I, what I, I don't like is people call them like fireball. That's whiskey. Well, it's pretty, pretty far from whiskey to me. I don't know, it doesn't taste like whiskey at all. So yeah, yep. things like that. So yeah, I'm just not looking for that sort of weird flavors, I, 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 but a natural flavor. Yeah. A hint of it. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So. And you yeah. mentioned you, you've got three examples there of whiskeys that you're making, but I think you said you have nine altogether. What are some of the other ones that you've got? We do. So I'll just, um, briefly go down the line. Sure. Um, like I said, we've got the straight bourbon and then the cherry whiskey that is also made with the straight bourbon as a base. Uh, we have our, our rye whiskey, which is a, a blend of 95% uh, rye and 100% rye. Um, we have our, our barrel proof 
excuse me, our port barrel finish, which is the bourbon rested in port wine barrels mm -hmm. for six months. And then we have a, a newbie to the table. It's been around for about a year and a half. And it has somehow become a top, uh, top 40 spirit in the state of Michigan, okay. which is our, our apple whiskey. So we're not a flavored whiskey company. And I'm, I'm going to posture by saying that, <laughs> but we, we created the apple whiskey just for fun. We right. had some, so we make, we, we've had a big distilling effort to distill a ton of apple brandy that is now resting in our, our, our used bourbon and rye barrels. And we had some leftover apples and we're, we're thinking, you know, what, what could we do with these? What would be fun? And um, again, my, my cohort, my fellow distiller, Curtis, he and I were joking that it'd be fun to just steep them in, in the whiskey and see what it tastes like. And it tasted great. And so we just, we put it on the market, we added the still house and, and um, the state of Michigan caught wind and they picked it up and it's been on fire since. That's good. That's Very cool. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In addition to that, we have our, our barrel proof bourbon that won a double gold at the San Francisco International Spirits Co competition last that. year. That's, that's thank no, you. Yeah, that's no easy task there. So way to go. Amen. Yeah, thank you. It won a gold this year, not a double mm -hmm. gold, but still a great, uh, great continuity there. Yep. And uh, and then our barrel proof rye, which is an excellent 112, 118 proof um, straight rye whiskey. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Other, other, any other things you got in the works or anything like that, that you want to share with the group? Yeah. Um, also, also a great question. Um, this is actually probably a fun opportunity to share some, share some Intel that is not public yet. Um, we are in the process uh, because the national cherry festival was canceled this year, which it might sound like a, you know, Oh, too bad. The festival is canceled, but it, this is a, one of the top two economic drivers for the north portion of the entire state of Michigan. So it's a, it's a big deal that it's canceled. Mm -hmm. um, and we were really bummed to hear about that. And we thought, we, you know, we were brainstorming, what could we do to enhance, you know, I guess enhance our position with that. And then also shine some light on the, the local agriculture that like you, Steve, you didn't know Traverse City was the, the cherry capital of the world. Correct. Um, but that's one thing that we want to change and we want to use our kind of our, our girth with the social media platforms. And, and, you know, now we have a, a pretty strong customer base across the country. Um, we came up with the idea of hosting a, um, a Traverse city cherry whiskey fest. And through that festival, it's going to be a virtual event taking place almost, it, it'll be exactly a month from today. Okay. We're hosting it internally. And we are launching our barrel proof cherry whiskey. Oh, nice. And it is, it's an exceptional spirit. It's, uh, it's, it's aged between five and six years. And um, the, the fruit steeping is, uh, we're doing a few less pounds per barrel. Mm -hmm. But we're debuting it as sort of a kind of a, a once a year release at a very uh, approachable price point. And just the R and D process alone kind of told us that it was, uh, it was the right thing to do. So we've got this, uh, this hour long event, the, the Traverse City Cherry Whiskey Fest uh, taking place in a month. And we're gonna do some live music. Uh, we're gonna do cocktails as well. And, and debut the release of that new product that will hopefully be uh, shelf ready by then. Okay, uh, a couple uh, questions in regard to that. Uh, yep. How can how can our folks here that are on here or watching this, because uh, we are going to post this, how how can they get signed up for that event? Yeah, we're um, we'll be releasing notes about the sign up process okay. in the next uh, two weeks or so, and we're going to be selling tickets directly through our website okay. tcwhiskey.com, and um, we're going to be offering two, they're, they're, we're calling them kits. So one kit will be for somebody who's getting to know whiskey, which will just have a, uh, a 200 ml sample mm -hmm. of the, uh, what we're calling the bottle proof cherry. So the yeah. 70 proof cherry. Okay. And then a sample of the barrel proof as well. And it'll come with uh, some glassware and some, some information on the, 
project. And then, and then a kind of a enthusiast kit, which will have a larger sample of the barrel proof cherry and then a smaller sample of the bottle proof cherry. And well, both kits will include the cocktail cherries, of course. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that'll be. That'll yeah, loop be, me into this, man. We 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 gotta we gotta promote this for you. this. Sounds fantastic. I have See, a question. I'm yeah. in on this. <laughs> are you going to be shipping to Kentucky by then? Um, so we are not handling the fulfillment side. Um, it's going to be uh, funneled through a seal, seal box in DC. Oh yeah, they ship everywhere. They ship everywhere. They're good yep. to go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just don't ask any questions. Just enjoy when you get your stuff. <laughs> so the answer is yes. It'll yes. be shipped to Kentucky. I'm in. I'm down for Perfect. that. I, I'll be on that. Uh, oh yeah. That sounds so much fun. And I, I'm curious about the cherry whiskey anyway, but then I, I, I even forget about that now. Barrel strength. Now you're really talking. Now you're in my wheelhouse now, my friend. Yes. That, Steve, that is the reaction we are really hoping to hear from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now it's it sounding really like whiskey. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's great, man. I'm, I'm in. We'll help you promote this. If you want to come on – the Bourbon Daily and talk about that once you get your date set and how to get registered and all that stuff. We'll would love to. That we'll would love be to help you promote it, man. That's it's really great. appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all in on that. Sounds like a great event. What what other questions does anybody have for Chris here? Hey, Chris. Yeah. Hi. I got a question uh, going back to the farm. Uh, when I think of Michigan cherries, I think of the dried cherries that I can get every time I get close to the bridge. I live in Ohio, by the way. Yeah. What what percentage of um, your father's production goes into dried cherries, and oh, where else does it go? How, I was kind of thinking about that too. What? Yeah. What how the do you do? Yeah. So the the answer to that has changed a lot in the last ten to twelve years. Um, so so cherry orchards operate on they operate in cycles, and back in the fifties we started farming sweet cherries, which are predominantly used in a lot of, there's like a, it's like a food additive or, or something similar. Uh, it's like a flavoring component. And then 10 years ago, we, we pulled out all the sweet cherries and then planted the Mount Morency sour cherries. And the sour cherries are what are used for dried fruit. Um, so there's, there's a good amount now. I, I, would, I would estimate probably a quarter of that crop is used for sour cherries and then the balance uh is then sold to either fruit cooperatives or you know one of our i think one of our larger accounts is is like gerber baby food or something like that so there's really? that's cool yeah uh, i <clears throat> we have a lot of ice cream customers uh baby food customers um and then again cooperatives that i should funnel through a, a an alternative sales network does your you. does your family farm sell any direct to consumers like you know roadside stand <laughs> anything like that? Well, Steve, um, after the age of ten or twelve, I was no longer I no longer had a roadside cherry stand off of M seventy two here in Northern Michigan, and that was when the direct to consumer process died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, my sister. I had my sister who was two years younger than me. <laughs> she didn't the take over the, the the legacy of that. <laughs> I'll have kids in a few years. They're going to have a cherry stand. They're going to be back direct to consumer. You're going to be back. All right. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'm no sorry, Bob. I, did you have another question, Bob? Uh, before? No. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, yep. Jen. All right. So this whole COVID thing, um, I know that a lot of places, and I apologize for the dogs barking. Um, That's all right. <laughs> the, a lot of places did the whole uh, sale of prepackaged cocktails. You said that you were doing the cocktail thing did you guys get to do that we we did kind of a little bit differently um we actually michigan just adopted that cocktail legislation uh probably like a week or two ago so the state as a whole was behind the eight ball uh unfortunately yeah, very. <laughs> um, but about a year ago we traverse city whiskey acquired a cocktail mixer company called cocktail crate and um just before the pandemic, we we made it built a presence on Amazon. So our, our ready to go cocktail was was not really as direct to consumer as we would have liked it, but it was um, sold through you know the online mediums like the website and and Amazon. So yeah, cocktail crate is a is a ready to drink, uh, pour it and marry it with whiskey, 
and your cocktail is magnificent. You said cocktail creative? Co uh, cocktail crate. Crate, okay. Yep. yep. And that, that is our closest uh, ready to drink cocktail uh, setup that exists today. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. What else do folks want to know? Uh, Chris? Yes. Did I, <clears throat> did I hear correctly that these start off as tart cherries? Uh, yes. Specifically, um, they're, they're not, so the, the most traditional tart cherry in Michigan is the Mount Morenci sour cherry. Right. I know exactly what those are. Yeah. You'll just hear it. You'll hear about it all the time. Yeah. Um, this variety is, is unique to the, the cherry lands or the sour cherry landscape or tart cherry landscape and it's uh it's called a balaton okay. sour cherry. No, yep. besides uh like like steve i'm not a fond i'm not fond of flavored whiskeys yep but there's a lot of spirits that if, if it's an infused thing right. they turn out really well yeah um, yeah and uh besides uh, my hobby of drinking bourbon i also right. i also cook a lot and bake a lot sure one of my, you know, besides peach pies, I love to do cherry cherry pies, but they have to be tart cherries, and yes. those are almost impossible to find fresh in St. Louis. Yeah, no, so. of course. I, I hear you loud and clear. The um, the tart cherries are a fantastic culinary cherry. Yeah. Yep. Lower pH, it, it's way better for cooking and baking. Right. You know, you can sweeten those a little bit. But I like my I like my cherry pies to be a little on the tart side. Oh yeah, I hear you, you know. loud and clear. Mm-hmm. I could see Rick Brenner adding that to his cherry pie now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Boozy, boozy cherry pie coming out this hey, year. <laughs> Mr. Brenner. And again, I'll be over for dessert. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. You've got my address. You can mail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Justine's benefited from some of that stuff, too. So, yeah. 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 So, I think we've all, all been there. So, yeah. That's cool. Uh, what else does anybody want to ask? I do have, are all your products available on Sealback or? All the products will be available in the next month or so. Okay. Well, most um, on the, on their website. Um, yeah, right now we're, we're, we've been relying on distribution as, right. uh, as our main source of sales uh, throughout the country. Uh, we're selling in 25 States. Uh, we are, we are in Kentucky. Christy, it's um it's a, it's a newer, a newer relationship with them, but um, the barrel. I've seen you at like some private bourbon bars. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, but yeah, soon through Sealbox, and um, yeah, we're working on. It. Okay. The okay. Um, the kit that you're talking about that's going to be available through through Sealbox. Yep. Um, you say that's going to hit within a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're we're gonna start pre-selling the kits in in about two weeks, and they will be shipped within three weeks. And again, the event is scheduled to take place on the last the last week of July. Okay. Okay. So being that I live in Missouri, would I look at your website to pre-order that? Yeah. And yeah. We'll ship through Sellbox. Yep. It'll be it'll be through our website and then fulfilled fulfilled through Sellbox. Oh, so so. Blake would be the one to put it in a package and ship it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. I'm quite familiar with them. With Blake, sure. sure. Yeah, they do a nice job. He does a nice job. Yeah. He's, oh, yeah. He's I've... killing it for sure. Aaron, will you give me a heads up when that goes out there so I can be sure I, I let everybody know? I figured. I figured. That's good. Yeah. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And what else does anybody want to know? Because you've definitely piqued my interest with uh, cherry flavored whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, the you know bo both kids will have the the new barrel proof cherry. Um, so regardless of what direction you go with the um, with the bottle proof or the barrel proof, which the, you know the two kits are at a slightly different price point, but either either way you'll be able to taste our whole cherry lineup. Which well, is, I love barrel proof bourbon and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, look for the big boy one, the barrel proof. Yeah, and, and yep. you know, some of the stuff, like, there's a, a local distiller in the St. Louis area, Stumpy's, that they, they this is with vodkas, but they do a peach and an apple vodka that's used with local oh, yeah. fruit by a local archer. 
and mm. both of those are excellent products. They're mm. unbelievably delicious. Even though vodka by itself kind of sucks, but anyway. Um. <laughs> Those products are the exception, sure. That's, yeah. that's, there's always exceptions in this stuff. Yeah. That's why it's, I, not, it's not artificially yeah. flavored. It's exactly. That's the key. The that's the key. I can pick myself, you know, so. Right. Right. Somebody it makes a huge me, difference. Yeah. Try, try this bubblegum. It's terrible. Yeah. All these <laughs> flavored boxes. They're, they're absolutely horrid. Uh, but yeah, but stuff like this, that's natural flavored. I, I'm, I'm always up for that stuff. So. Yeah. 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 And Steve, I'm like you, like I hate flavored vodka, but I will make, or flavored whiskey, but I will make an exception for Michigan cherry whiskey. Mm, see? Just as a native Michigander. <laughs> I like that in Michigan, Michigan here. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely. Is the, is the apple, is it out for distribution in Michigan or do we have to come to the distillery or the outpost to get it? Yeah, no, it, uh, it is available in Michigan. Um, our our largest retail partner is Meyer, so it is available at the, the Stillhouse or the Outpost, uh, but also at I think most, if not all, Meyer locations. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. And if they don't have it, you have to yell at them for me. I will do that. Okay. <laughs> Christine, if you go looking for it, you should grab me a bottle. I can do that as well. Yeah, that I'm sending awesome. my family to Meyer now in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can we can work that out. Justine and I always have these uh, piles of things when we see each other. We have to get to one another. So <laughs> I, I've already I've got a couple things for her right now, and uh, now she can start some things if I can get it onto you guys. So oh, apparently, I'm going to have three things of apple whiskey to get. To yeah, you guys. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, on the on the uh, back to the the cherry, the barrel strength. What what do you think? I know it's it, you don't know until it's bottled, but what are you thinking that's going to come in at? Right now, we're expecting the the barrel group cherry to come in right around. We're we're hoping to get it on the shelf between uh, seventy nine ninety nine and eighty four oh, ninety nine. No, no, I meant the proof. The proof. Oh, the proof. That's a good price, by the way. That sounds yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah fair about the money. What's it for a barrel strength? Yeah. <laughs> The, the proof will be between, so right now we're, we're working on the barrels that we're going to be blending together. Um, I, my gut tells me it'll probably be between 113 and 115. Okay. That's my sweet yeah. spot. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. It's uh, my favorite proof. 115. That's, <laughs> that's what we did yeah. a show. What's your, uh, for that's, that's right at uh, everyday drinker level for me. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. I like it right, right at that spot so that's why the 1920 from old flow is one of my favorites 19, mm. 115 proof perfect perfect just the right amount cool well uh, unless anybody's got anything else kind of the last call here any questions i'm looking forward yeah, to Mary's. all right aaron yeah. uh, question for you do you have my phone number I believe I do. Yes. Okay. Can you call me I after know. this? I don't, if you're available, give me a, give me a ring. I will go over the logistics. I want to get everybody's address and we'll work out all that stuff too. Okay. So we'll give do. me a call. We'll work out that. And that's, that's it in terms of the event itself. I appreciate you guys coming out. Chris, this was great, man. Really cool. Steve, yeah, I just, yeah. I have, I have one thing that I can't forget to share. And okay. that's just a small housekeeping item. <clears throat> if you're ever playing the at home bartender for yourself or a group of people, please, Always make sure that the stopper <laughs> is in your bitter, bitter yeah. spot. You, you do not want to <laughs> take a drink of that cocktail. That's a lot of bitters nope. in there. <laughs> Again, the bitters are flowing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be a little tough for sure. All right. That's all. Right. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Great job, Chris. Good stuff. And uh, we can't wait to get these cherries and try them. But we'll give you some feedback. We'll let you know. And also looking forward to the event, your cherry festival you're going to have yeah. on. I think we're all going to be on that. Hundred percent, I'm in on that. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Thanks a lot, we'll, guys. Uh, see you guys soon. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay.